Joining us now is Bernard Muir, the chair of the NCAA Men's Division I Basketball Committee and the director of athletics at Stanford University. First of all, congratulations Thank to you. you. Um, I, I asked you off camera, I'll ask you on. Was it everything you thought it would be? It was a tremendous week. Uh, all my colleagues, the 10 members of us getting together, talking basketball, watching basketball, and then coming out with this bracket. Uh, just, just a tremendous week, and we're glad we're ready to kick it off. Any hesitation at all about putting three teams out of the four in the same, you know, from the same conference, the ACC. You know, they earn their right to, to be there, and and uh, certainly with Duke and, and Zion back, uh, phenomenal run here in the ACC tournament, and we thought both Duke, Virginia, and North Carolina were deserving on that one line. Looking at the Big Ten Conference Championship game today, how close perhaps was Michigan State, and how did that game play into what ultimately happened with the committee selections? Well, great question. Michigan State, uh, they leapfrogged Kentucky uh, by winning this, this game. They had so many great quad one wins. Uh, but at the same token, we thought Michigan State and Michigan would be on that two line uh, once the, the weekend unfolded. Gotcha. Tell me about the Belmont conversation. <laughs> so Belmont, interesting. They, you know, they made the most of the opportunities that they had. They had two wins in, in, the, in quad one, um, and we just thought that they were a phenomenal basketball team, very high on the offensive front, uh, great offensive efficiency, and we thought if deserving, they, they belong in the field. And so that leads to my question about the net. Do you have a sense of how much the net factored into what we're seeing here? Well, I, I would say this. The, the net allowed for more quality one wins, especially when we looked at the number of conferences that fall in that quad one seg segment. And certainly Belmont, uh, among others, uh, certainly racked up some qu qu quad one wins. And th that's what we found pretty impressive. But now we're looking at the results of the deliberations. What was the tough part? What, what, what were the major hurdles that your guys faced? Uh, you mentioned it earlier. I think it was just those last teams in, uh, very few spots left. And there were many teams that just, it's such a fine line uh, that looked so much like themselves, uh, like others. And in the end, uh, we ended up putting in a, a great field and St. John's was the last team in. No. Go ahead, Claire. No. Well, one of the things, one of the things that I know that, that we talked about before, when when you visited us earlier, uh, whether injuries and coaching situations affect the status of teams. Did they this time around? We we certainly discussed them, but we wanted to see how teams played played out. So I can think of like LSU and and Smart coming back. Uh, they were impressive. Certainly Zion at Duke mm -hmm. uh, and and Ward at, at Michigan State. We were just trying to see, okay, exactly how are these teams going to play uh, when these when these student athletes come back, and obviously they played really well and they played themselves into the field. And, and as far as the power conference teams that were left out, uh, Alabama, for example, had a win over Kentucky. Uh, Indiana had all kinds of injury issues. North Carolina State had a very high net rating, I think, in the in the yeah. low 30s, although bad non-conference strength of schedule. It seems to me in the past. The determining factor was a number of quality wins, but that maybe this year the, the multitude of losses more outweighed that. Is that fair to say? That's f totally fair to say. Uh, the, they had so many opportunities. What did they do with those opportunities? And in some cases, uh, like in NC State, they had great opportunities in quad one, but just did not win, win them. And so that was a concern for us. What do you think, and Clark has, Clark has, has been pushing, and, and actually so has said about the mid-majors and, and their prominence in the tournament. Do you feel that they've made strides? Well, this year we had 11 conferences, a, a, a third of the overall 32 conferences that we have in Division I that had multiple teams in, yeah, in the bracket. Right, and, right. and they were deserving, and we thought they belonged there. Uh, this was a high year for us. I think last, last three years it was nine, nine conferences that had multiple teams. So we, we were fortunate. We had opportunities, especially that fell our way, that we could get more teams, uh, deserving teams, into the, into the field. Going back to Michigan and Michigan State, talking about how they were solidly on the two line, is that a function of balancing the field in some regards in terms of looking at those top four lines and at seeing where you can get really good solid strength across those four absolutely lines. and coming into the week we we thought there was probably six or seven deserving teams of which Michigan and Michigan State were considered for that one line mm -hmm. in the end we thought boy there's only four spots left only four spots available and we thought the teams that we put there were most deserving mm -hmm.